Okay, let's do one last example. In this case, a metal sphere in the center surrounded by a conducting shell, the metal sphere. In the center has plus 2q, the shell has minus 3q. We got radii a, b, and c. So let's do a, b first, v, a, b in particular. So v, a, b is the integral from a to b of e dot dl. Well, what's the field in that region of space? kq over r squared. The q is 2q. So there's the 2q and the k. And so integral of 1 over r squared minus k2q over r from a to b minus 2kq. 1 over b minus 1 over a. Flip, flip the order around because of the minus sign and there's our answer. 2kq, two, two 1 over a minus 1 over b. Now, what's V, B, C? Well, you should know that. The difference in potential across B and C, as opposed to just the potential at B or at C, it's asking a different thing. So V, B, C is integral from B to C of E dot DL. You know what the integral of that is because E is zero. So there is no potential difference. Now, how about VAC. Well, to do that, you just integrate the field across A to C, and we've already done it. So you have A to C is equal to A to B plus B to C, which is the answer we got for A to begin with plus zero. And finally, well, not finally, let's determine BC. To say what's VC, the potential here is simply the integral of the field from that location out to our reference point at infinity. So that's Q enclosed over epsilon zero A dr from C to infinity. Minus KQ C to infinity of one over R squared. KQ over R from C to infinity. Which is equal to zero minus KQ over C. So VC is minus kq over c, which is the same as the potential from a point charge of the same size as the overall charge, which is minus q. So minus q is the system charge. Now determine va, the potential at location a. Well, that is a to b plus b to c plus c to infinity, which is 2kq, two, two 1 over a minus 1 over b, plus 0 minus kq over c. So we can just do the algebra and there's our result. Ah, it seemed like a lot of work. We can actually do this a little simpler. In the case of nested conducting shells, we can consider the potentials from each shell of charge and then add them up because it's a scalar quantity. So consider each shell being isolated by itself and what its potential is and just add them. So let's do that. So we have plus 2q on the outer edge of the inner sphere. What does that mean about the inner edge of the outer sphere? It's got to be the opposite charge, minus 2q, which leaves 1q, 1 negative q left for the outer edge of the outer sphere. So what's VA? VA is... 2kq over a minus 2kq over b because you have this shell. I'm going to add that potential. That adds to the potential at a. And then the potential from this sphere of shell of charge minus kq over c, which gives us the same result. So that's that can be a, a helpful shortcut path to the answer. Finally, let's determine the voltage at some intermediate location R. Well, very similar to what we just did. We have the E field from R to B. So that's not across the whole space, it's just across part of the space between A and B. Then B to C and C to infinity. So that's 2Q times K, R to B of 1 over R squared, the E field plus zero minus kq over c, which gives us the exact same answer we had previously, except instead of a, because we're not starting at a, we're starting at r. 
So hopefully that was helpful to understand another scenario of charred shells and what their potential is. In this case, for conducting shells, we looked at the overall potential at the center for a non-conducting spherical volume of charge and we took differential DQs all the way out from from the center all the way out to the outer edge to do a similar thing to find what the potential is in the center of the non-conducting sphere. So that will conclude our basic analysis and examples of potential, electric potential.